On August 12th, China's National Space Administration reported that the satellite named Land Exploration 4-1, carrying a synthetic aperture radar, was launched using a Long March 3D rocket into a geosynchronous orbit around Earth. That's a really big deal as no other country has attempted such a package so high up. Information gathering capabilities of such a satellite might signal a new era in space-based surveillance. But why is it such a huge deal? First, what is a geosynchronous orbit? It's a path that the satellite makes over Earth at at least 36,000 kilometers up. But the path or orbit is synchronized with the planet's revolutions. The Chinese satellite is inclined, meaning not flying perfectly alongside the equator. Rather, the satellite is made to wobble in some sort of eight-shaped pattern over and under the equator as it sits over a certain spot on the Earth. Usually, remote sensing satellites using cameras or radars use low Earth orbits, ranging from a few hundred kilometers up to a thousand or so kilometers. Those work great, as sensors don't need to be big and heavy. Satellites' proximity to Earth more than makes up for its capability, compared to some huge satellite with a huge expensive sensor. But there's a drawback to low Earth orbits. Those can't hover, so to say, over the same spot on Earth. They have to orbit the Earth and it's only once in every week or two weeks, typically, that they actually get to fly over the same spot on Earth again. Their sensors can sway left and right, however, so when recording at an angle, they can still get images of that same spot even when not overflying it directly resulting in effective revisit time of a few days for a typical modern remote sensing satellite. Now, that's great, an image every three or so days, for example. But it still means there is no information update for three days. A way around that is to use a constellation of dozens or even hundreds of such satellites. But that has its own issues. So what does a geosynchronous satellite offer? It's there nearly all the time stares over an area 24-7. Plus, the area that's surveilled is much, much bigger than what the low Earth orbit could offer. Low orbit satellites usually take high resolution imagery in swaths that are 5 to 10 kilometers wide. By the time one swath is processed, the satellite has gone past the interest point. Geosynchronous satellite also needs to process a swath that the camera zoomed into and filmed. But when it's done, it can refocus on another area moments later then get back to the first area, and so on. Essentially, coverage from a geosync imaging satellite is much, much bigger. A single satellite can monitor a better part of one hemisphere, the only limit really being the worsening angle and increasing distance near the edges of the monitored area. But in the case of China, the mentioned satellite can likely monitor not just the entire China, but approaches all the way from north of Japan to the Malacca Strait. Now, the Chinese satellite is not the only imaging satellite in geosync orbit. Countries like the US, Japan and others have various meteorological satellites, but those use fairly small optical cameras. For weather forecasting, they don't need to be big, so image resolution of 500 meters to a few kilometers to a pixel is satisfactory. Time for a little digression now. China is also the first and only country which has launched high-resolution optical camera satellites to geosynchronous orbits. They launched a demonstrator satellite with a mid-sized lens camera in 2015, which could achieve a resolution of 50 meters to a pixel. Then in 2020 and 2023, they launched two Gaofan 13 class satellites, also to a geosynchronous orbit monitoring the area around China. But their optical cameras were much bigger similar in size to the biggest U.S. Keyhole class spy satellites, which the Hubble Space Telescope was based on. So the actual resolution was 15 meters per pixel. We'll get to usefulness of such resolutions later. But those were all optical sensors, which means that during the night the camera is useless. That's 8 to 16 hours per day of being useless. An enemy strike package of dozens of planes being prepared at an airbase can be assembled and sent to perform their mission and return back in such a time frame, perhaps even twice. A ship or a fleet of ships can move their position by 400 to 800 kilometers in that time frame. But it gets worse. Optical cameras are also useless when there is ample cloud coverage, which in the example of Taiwan or Okinawa is roughly speaking six months during a year. 
that of course changes with the time of the year. For the island of Guam, it's slightly worse at some 7 to 8 months worth of ample cloud coverage, on average. So in practice, when compounded with the day and night cycle, optical sensors can have entire days or even a week without a good glimpse of a target. In a war, such lack of information can be extremely limiting. Which is why synthetic aperture radars are a thing. Those were used back in the Cold War as well, but they were huge, expensive and not very good. Nowadays, due to technological progress, even commercial companies launch whole flocks of such satellites for radar imaging. Basically, it's like what bats do with sound, creating synthetic images in their heads. Here's for example an image synthesized by a radar imaging sensor from a Finnish-made ISI satellite. From low Earth orbit, roughly half a meter resolution is achieved, though in azimuth it's even better. Individual ships in port can be observed, as well as port cranes and other smaller items. Such satellites use their constant movement to record a 3D image over time, increasing resolution. It's possible the eight-shaped pattern for the Chinese satellite also serves a similar purpose of providing multiple angles. But no one launched a radar imaging satellite into a geosync orbit until now. Of course, operating some 70 times farther away in a high orbit, the resolution suffers. On January 18th of this year, China Aerospace Science and Technology Corporation released a blue book on upcoming space activities for the year. One of the items listed was a future launch of a 20-meter resolution radar satellite in high orbit, which basically means a geosync orbit. And now in August, that seems to have happened. The 20-meter resolution might be optimistic, but even if that figure is the best-case scenario, with more usual resolutions being 30 or 40 meters, those would still all represent hugely useful figures for the Chinese military. For suddenly, all those limitations of nighttime or cloud cover would be gone. And with a perpetual staring satellite fixed over the same spot, it would give China, quite literally, a 24-7 uninterrupted gaze onto a spot. 20 to 40 meter resolution would be enough to spot large individual ships the size of carriers and other flat tops, even when stationary. It might even be enough to discern destroyer-sized ships that are moving. It might be enough to monitor increased activity at air bases, despite not being able to actually see individual planes. There are limitations involved, of course. The radar must zoom into an area and dwell on it, so basically even one such satellite with, theoretically speaking, a perfect view can't really monitor the entire China and Western Pacific at the same time. It has to focus onto a small area, before retasking to another area. Perhaps dozens of areas could be refocused onto and kept under surveillance intermittently during half an hour. But to actually watch the entire seas in near real time, that would require constellations of many such satellites. While that may be the holy grail, it's likely even one update every half an hour is gonna be very beneficial to the military, so those future constellations might not be so impossible to assemble. The first geosynced radar satellite is likely only the start of a future constellation, much like we're seeing with optical-based satellites in similar orbits. So far, even low-Earth orbit satellites have proven to be hard to blind regularly and cost-ineffective to shoot down. What countermeasures await geosync satellites? That remains to be seen.